In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the new render setup inside of Maya 2016 Extension 2. Render setup makes it quicker and easier to render and manage complex scenes, bringing a modern approach to adding shot-based overrides to your files. We're going to be using the render setup to segment my file and show you the workflow of adding overrides to lights and shaders. The first thing we need to do is add a new render layer into our scene. As soon as we make that render layer, we can view it by clicking the eyeball icon. And what happens is my viewport goes blank because we haven't made any relationships to this render layer. We haven't populated it with any of the data in our scene yet. So to do that, all we have to do is add on a collection. We can add objects to the collection in two different ways. We can simply drag and drop an object from the outliner onto the collection to make the relationship, or we can use expressions to add objects to collections and remove objects from collections. And this is possible because render setup is based on a name system. That's what makes it so powerful and so flexible. It gives it the ability to dynamically update, making sure that your constantly changing data in your pipeline is handled elegantly. So let's check that out in context. I'm going to write a simple expression to add in my two spaceships. So I'm just going to do dr with a star, a wild card after that, to go ahead and add in Dreadnoughts 12 and Dreadnoughts 12b into this collection. So what we've got going on now is we've got a render layer and we have a collection with some geometry on it, but what we haven't done is added any lights to this render layer. It looks a little bit like there's light in my scene, but that's just because I have some hardware fog in the viewport. So what I want to do is start to create another collection that's going to add the lights to this render layer. And I'm going to use a template to help me speed that up. Templates are a really powerful part of what render setup brings to the table. You can save templates out for your collections as well as your render layers. They're just simple JSON files. So the idea behind this is after you've taken your time to develop a really complex render setup, you can take that work and replicate it across your shots in your show. Very powerful, very elegant workflow. So I'm going to just go ahead and bring in this template lights. And what that does is it's, it's in italic, so it's showing me that it's an imported in template. And it's just a dynamic expression that's looking for all the lights in my scene. So star, light, star, they're automatically getting grabbed and thrown onto this new render layer. Pretty straightforward. So what that means is because it's a dynamically added light to the collection using these wildcards, if I start to add more lights into my scene, they're automatically going to get populated onto that collection. So let's check that out. I'm going to use the light editor to help me do that. So this is another new feature in 2016 extension 2. The light editor consolidates all your lighting information into a nice little window that lets you work with them very efficiently and elegantly. So we're just going to create a new spotlight in our scene. And we'll go and we'll scale that guy up. And you can see that that spotlight was automatically added into that collection, again, because of that, that wildcard expression. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to just view this spotlight using our look through camera here to kind of position that light over here, and we're just going to backfill this, this ship here. So that looks pretty cool. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to do some overrides. I want to pump all the lights in my scene a given percentage. The director comes in, looks great, I want it brighter or I want it darker. So we want to do an override on the lights. The thing that's kind of cool is we've got all of our lights collected for us and populated onto this co the collection lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this guy and I'm going to make a relative override of all the intensity values. So we're going to switch the override attribute type to, to relative. We'll just grab something like a spotlight. We'll go to the attribute editor for this guy and I'm going to drag and drop the attribute that I want to have changed for every single object that's in that collection. So any object that lives on the light collection that has the attribute intensity is going to get this relative override added to it. So if we jump over here to the relative override and we bump this up to something like two, you can see that it's going to bump all my lights. So my directional light, my spotlight, uh, my point light, they all got from their current baseline value two added to it. Now that's obviously a little bit crazy, but you know, we could go ahead and subtract some. We could do minus one, right? It's very fast and very easy to work with these overrides because of their, their flexibility. So that gives you a quick example of how we can use overrides to start to make quick changes to our scene here. Now, obviously, as I'm doing something like this, we always have the ability to turn on and off the effect of a given, of a given override or a given collection for that matter. So we can solo collections, we can mute, we can mute the effects of objects on collections or overrides on collections. It's extremely powerful and very elegant to work for. So we're going to turn off that intensity override because I don't want my scene to be all blown out. So the next thing that I want to do is show you how we can do a shader override. Let's say we wanted to generate a map pass or an ID channel for the spaceship. So let's, let's do that really quickly. So we'll create another collection. Pretty straightforward. We'll just call this one ships. And I'm going to add to this collection these guys here. So 
Notice that objects can live in multiple collections. And with that collection added, we'll just kind of solo that guy so you can see that it's just the ships and we'll actually put the lights on too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an override on these. So we're gonna say, instead of doing an absolute or relative override on a single attribute, I'm gonna create a shader override. So that means that anything that's in this collection is going to get its shader taken off and this new shader overridden or put on top of it. So very straightforward. We'll go ahead and we'll add this, uh, we'll just do a surface shader on that guy. That's cool. And we'll just make it red so it's easy to see. So now we've got that shader override happening. We'll go back to our collection, turn that guy on so you can see the effect of all of these collections kind of turned on. And then, like I said, if I don't like what this collection's doing, I don't like that override, I can just turn that override off. Just like that, we're gonna be right back to our original ship. If I really do want that ID channel, I could turn it back on. So that's a quick example of the types of things you can do with overrides in the new shader setup inside of Maya 2016 extension two. Now there's a couple of other little things I wanna to touch on briefly. There's been a lot of nice subtle changes made to the outliner, specifically to help them work efficiently with the render setup. So you can see that we have a new filtering bar. So right now we're, we're filtering out the master layer. But if I wanted to, I could say, you know what? Show me inside my current render setup layer. So if I do that, it's going to basically go through and just only show things that, are, that have been added to the current selected um, render layer. Pretty straightforward. Another thing that's kind of cool about this is they've also added the ability to actually get directly to your shaders in the outliner. So lots of little subtle tweaks and changes that makes the whole overall workflow when doing render setup that much more efficient and that much more elegant. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about really quickly is the ability for Maya to handle namespaces and the render setup system to handle namespaces and referencing efficiently because again, it's based on this naming workflow. So it just doesn't break. And that's really the key concept here. So let's go ahead and get back to our master layer, filter our master layer out here. And you can see that I've got these namespaced um, props in here. So what I want to do is I want to create a new collection that's going to grab props. And whenever I import props in or whenever I reference props in, I want them automatically to get added to this collection. So how do you do that? Well, you create a new collection, pretty straightforward. And we'll just call it P for props. And I'm gonna create an expression, a dynamic expression for this guy. So we're gonna say P-R-O-P -P, and then colon for namespace and then a star. And then I've always got a second namespace here. So I, you know, I kind of have my first namespace and my second namespace. So I just need to do colon after that and then another star and hit the return key. And just like that, we've now added in this dynamic expression that's going to, if we turn the display of that layer on, it's gonna go through and grab that table. You know, it's gonna grab those props and let's not keep our ships red. Let's turn that off. I don't like those guys being red. So pretty straightforward. I like that. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and reference in some objects that are gonna have the namespace props and show you how that's going to just come in and work. And that's really the key here is that it, it just works. It's so cool. So we'll just add props namespace for these flags. We'll go and we'll reference those guys in. And just like that, in they come. We'll give this guy a solo so we just see the props. So here they come and we're gonna solo that guy. Turn off these other layers. Actually, let's keep the lights on and get rid of that collection there. So now you can see that we've got our props layer, which is just kind of in, in our lights displayed here. But that is really what it's like to work with the render setup inside of Maya 2016 extension two. Just to recap, it's a very powerful system that's based on names. So it has the ability to constantly handle the changing data in your pipeline. And that's really what makes it so special. Thanks for taking the time to check it out.